Good morning, everyone. We're here in Scottsdale, Arizona with David Boggs this morning, and he has been so kind to do an interview with me to discuss how him and his family got in the Arabian horse business and uh, just a little bit how it all started for him. Good morning, David. Good morning, Laura. And first of all, I'd like to welcome you to my home, and I'd like to say thank you for doing these very special podcasts during these terrible times. And it's truly, it brightens the days of all of us and keeps the Arabian horse community together. I know there's a great group of mares that also have won major titles. Could you share some of the national champion mares or special mares that you have showed over the years? Well, the mares have been special uh, to me, Laura. The signs have been great. The mares are very dear to our hearts. And they're, they're embedded forever. And each one is a memory and was a journey. So going way back and, and remembering one of the most perfect mayors I recall in my first national United States champion was the mayor Boss Kalanet uh, from the Michix Arabians. And she was a mayor of almost perfect confirmation. She didn't really love to be the greatest show horse, but there's a case where judging was really good because when you walk the horses, she was so perfect before she even stopped. Her confirmation and beauty and quality and uh, just pulled her right through it. She was really, really something special. The most exciting and, and, and impacting one was sitting with Joe Morrissey when he bought NH Love Potion. Uh, this mayor sold at the last auction there for $2.5 million. So there was a little bit of pressure, but I accepted <laughs> it well because her quality and attitude and beauty was like another. She was champion mayor at Scottsdale, and she went on to win Star World at that time, yeah. and then United States national champion mayor, NH Love Potion. Uh, and from her, I went on to a dynamic show horse, so a Russian mayor, the great Amber Satin. And she was actually twice national champion mayor, Laura, and she sold to Paolo Gucci, uh, just, few weeks before her last national champion, the daughter of the great Mascot out of the Tornado bred mare. An amazing show mare with the most elegant neck and, and show horse attitude. And, and one of my very favorites forever will be Amber Satin. David and Catherine Straz, they purchased the beautiful mare from Michigan Arabians, La Duquesa, the Spanish bred mare. Big chest of mare with a beautiful head and a lot of power. And just thrilling to show for them, and she was the United States national champion there. Helena was probably most noted as the mother of the legendary LD Pistol. She was a beautiful dark bay mare and a body as smooth as silk. It was really a treat to show her to Canadian national champion mare from my friends Al and Marion Coro. Padron Psyche started to produce it from his first full crop. Uh, Padron to Psyche was his beautiful daughter, JBK Missing Fawn. And JBK Missing Fawn just embodied refinement and type. And she was universally loved by everybody. And I don't think ever defeated. And, and she went on to be United States national champion there. And uh, her sister, Mystic Lady, another daughter of Padron Psyche, Chestnut there with a lot of charisma and type. It was very special and really enjoyed presenting her. Uh, she was owned by Fernando and Michelle Pfeiffer and Felix Cantu, a partnership of friends that had this beautiful mare. It was really uh, a, a great tribute. Uh, Another beautiful United States national champion mare was Europa El Jamal. She was thrilling. I first met Europa while visiting Brazil. She was bred by Haras J.M., Jose Elvis Filho. She was beautiful. I believe at that time was one of the few Jamals out of a Polish Krabat bred mare. She was imported to the United States by Felix Cantu, and she took America by storm, winning the United States title. Later, Europa El Jamal made her home in Saudi Arabia. She was magnificent. I remember the charisma of the big, beautiful mare, T.F. Queen of Hearts. Fabulous, bold mare that was really thrilling to show. She had a lot of presence, a lot of impulsion. 
She was the Canadian national champion mayor, and we had a super fun time presenting her for our friends from Minnesota, Les and Diane Van Dyke. And I cherish the third United States national champion daughter of Padron Psyche, Midwest presented Ty Emerald Bay. She has exquisite type and exudes refinement and elegance. She is now owned and resides at the Royal Jabbar Stables of Majdi and Princess Zain in Oman, Jordan. And perhaps the leading winner of National Champion Awards was the amazing mayor, J.J. La Estrella. A daughter of Magnum Psyche out of a daughter of Bay Shaw, Estrella was bred by Haras Mayed and owned and loved by Don and Janie Morris from Oak Ridge. Estrella was not only beautiful, but extremely athletic, charismatic. She knew she was born to win. Carry on again the tradition of the draw. The beautiful Magnum daughter, again from Michigan, Sarabians and Barbara Kaur at Strawberry Banks. One of the most beautiful of all time was the Magnum Psyche daughter, Magdalena. She won an amazing group of uh, national champion contenders there to win the United States Championship. Uh, extremely beautiful, great body. Uh, just absolutely love Magdalena by Magnum Psyche. And then came J.J. La Baronessa. She was the gold champion mayor of Scottsdale. She went on to be the United States national champion by Magnum Psyche out of a daughter of Bay Shaw. What made it fun was presenting her for Joaquin and Fernando. What a thrilling ride it was. What an exciting mayor with a brilliant future. Baronessa. The Poland Vittorio was at least there. We took Jeannie Morse and we had heard about this mayor but somehow we saw her and had to have her. We negotiated the lease of the beautiful Viejan Mose, a daughter of QR Mark that had been a previous world champion uh, in Paris. She had been a previous national champion in Poland. Uh, extremely beautiful and we were so excited for her arrival in the United States. She had a great trip. Uh, again, she was undefeated. Viesha uh, Motze was the grand champion mayor of Scottsdale, the gold champion mayor of Las Vegas World Cup, and the United States national champion was one of the most perfect shows I've ever had. She knew it was her time. It was her last show in the United States before going back to uh, Poland. She left us three beautiful daughters and now some granddaughters. So very special memories of Viesha Motze. Her name was the Power of Tower. That's what what she had seen. And next is one you'll probably never forget. One of the most famous is the black mare R.H. Triana. Triana is a vision of beauty and elegance, uh, supreme attitude, kindness, loves to show. Uh, another one that even before she stopped, she knew she was the winner because she just had an air about her and an elegance. And I, I loved my time with Triana. I purchased her for Jeff Sloan and his partners. And I believe we started out with Triana in Scottsdale. She was the grand champion, gold champion there. She went on to win the Las Vegas World Cup champion there. And on to the United States national champion there. Uh, she's not only a beautiful mayor, she's a beautiful mama. She's produced many, many champions. We have her daughter, Gloriana, that's owned by the partners and everybody that will go to national maturity this year. So the great black mayor, R.H. Triana, will live on in, in my heart forever. Then D.A. Valentino, he, he was not only a great horse, but he produced M.D. Hibadala. She was purchased by Jeff Sloan Partners, a fabulous show horse. We won the Breeders' Finals. We had a little warm-up show in the United States, where she became the United States National Champion Mayor. Big, bay, elegant, high body mayor, uh, amazing confirmation, really a blessing. And she's went on to produce some beautiful babies, I know, for Japanese partners. Went to Brazil to see the Brazilian nationals as we do each year. And I remember seeing the beautiful mayor, Queen Ida. She was in the showroom, I believe, in Hell City at that time. And she was the national champion mayor of Brazil. Uh, stunningly beautiful, perfect confirmation. Everybody wanted to buy them there. 
We literally had 10 minutes to make a decision. And I called my friend Doug Ledley, who had just started with Orion Farms and Steve Poor and Christina. And they bought the Marisite Unseen, which I really appreciated their confidence. Uh, it was an expensive price, but a magnificent mare. Uh, Queen Ida came to the States. She's the winner of Scottsdale, United States Nationals, uh, the Breeders' Finals in the fall. She had an undefeated career in the United States, and now making some beautiful babies for the poors at Orion Farms. What a thrill it was to show the Canadian national champion mare, Pink Rose SRA, for Dan and Maureen and Stone Ridge Arabians. A daughter of our national champion and Scottsdale champion, Bahir El Marwan, out of a daughter of Valentino. She's exciting and thrilling, and we're ready for her to come back again for the senior mare halter real soon. Again to Argentina, another import and a sister to Azra, SM Miss Finesse, was bred by George Milne, a young, beautiful filly. She came over as a three year old. And we started her show career. She was the gold champion at the Breeders' Finals. Went on to be the United States National Champion Junior Mayor. And now she's going to produce some fillies this year. I think three or four via Amber transfer. And then go on to the Senior Mayor competition. We're very proud to have her at the West. And it was an honor to lead her for the Millies. And we go on to JJ Lacandessa for Haras Bayed. Fernando, what a great breeder you are. Uh, to see Magnum and the Magnum Daughters produce, visiting in Argentina, each time is very emotional. He had bred La Signorita, she's a full sister to Caramba, to Marwan. So she was the first daughter of Marwan, born at Arras Bayed. I saw her as a young two-year-old, couldn't believe my eyes. Perfect confirmation, embodied spirit and type loves to show. So I had to twist his arm and say she needs to come to the United States because you know those good ones they like to keep it home. <laughs> but Fernando did it for me and, and really just to enjoy his mare here in the United States. How impactful. She won immediately here at her first show, United States National. She's national champion there. She went on to be Scottsdale gold champion there. She's a young mare still in the junior division. She has yet to come back as a senior and fabulous. The daughter of Marwan, out of a daughter of Magnum Psyche, again back to the throne in his pedigree. And one I know that is dear to your heart and the reigning national champion is Perfinka. Uh, another visit with Poland, and we're so proud to have imported her there. And Laura, you and I got to go have fun in Poland and buy her on the sale. That was just amazing because I never thought that that you or I, we'd have a chance to get her. And it was exciting. The sale was magnificent. And I must admit a shot of vodka helped because we were <laughs> nervous before the bidding, you know, against the high bidders from all countries. Yeah. But she was meant to be with you and she came back to win the United States national champion there uh, with Laura. So it was so much fun. And then her daughter, Perfinka, uh, your, your father, Dick, is completely responsible for her being here because we had heard about Perfinka and the great job that Ryan Jones did showing her and how there were special comments all over social media about this filly winning in Auckland and then winning in Poland and winning in the Middle East and she was on base to Saudi and she was winning there. When there was an opportunity I remember your dad, he said, let's please buy that there. Well, I reached out and, and there was no way to buy the thing at that time, but we were able to lease her. So we were so excited after she weaned her baby by Ecuador that we prepared her and brought her to the United States. And I believe her first show might have been Las Vegas, where she was the goal. And she took it by storm. People, again, had never seen her here in America. A very true Arabian with a white flea bit, and then she's such a dancer. Uh, she had all of the great attributes of the mares from Poland and those special white mares that the breeders of Poland are so famous for. Very kind, very willing, uh, really a, a white peacock. She loves to show. And she won Vegas, and then we got to win, I think, a qualifying show, and she went on to be 
uh, unanimous United States national champion. And she finished this year by winning Scottsdale and, and the last jewel of her Triple Crown. And we're very excited to have some babies coming up by an embryo transfer for Cedar Ridge. And then to see what the future holds. There's talk of her possibly going into pride of Colvin Sale. And uh, we just want to hang on to her as long as we can. We really love her. So the list of the mayors was as great as the list of the Steins. And uh, every one I can, I can talk way too much, but they're, <laughs> they're great memories. And it's, it's really been a great journey. And wonderful people and clients that have allowed me to you know, live out your dream. Sure. David, over the years you've had some amazing trainers that maybe started at Midwest or at some time during their career have come to Midwest. Would you like to share with us some of these uh, trainers that have made an impact in their life? I know a lot of them say the same that without you they wouldn't be where they're at today. So could you share some of the people that have been with you and what it meant to you? Well, it's very kind of them, but I appreciate their comments. And we really, uh, back to the saying that teamwork makes the dream work. And most of these young guys came like I did, you know, when I visited Lasma for the first time, met Padron for the first time, kind of that door opening, and you get your foot in the door to work with great horses. And these were young men and young women that, that had the, shared the passion of the horses with me because the only thing that was, was extremely important and had to be was that they had a love for the horses and they were ready to give their all. That's 24 seven because sometimes pulling a mare or showing horses at 11 o'clock at night might happen. And you know, you, you've got to have the passion for it. Yes. I'm going to give you guys a list of names of people that I believe are leaders today that either started at Midwest or have worked together with me at Midwest that I truly look up to and admire and, and work together. Now, uh, networking is another great tool to marketing. I think that you have to share and great business comes from that. We all know Terry Holmes. Terry was part of the furniture of Midwest for 14 or 15 years. And he learned from the breeding to conditioning to showing, uh, traveling abroad with me for the very first times. Uh, He's a great horseman, a great judge, a great father, and, and manages a great business of his own today. Greg Hazelwood, one of the best halter trainers, if not the best halter trainer in the world. Uh, he just had a way about him that was methodical, and he, it was many a national champion, so Greg was always in the background, preparing and working with me. And uh, I'll always appreciate, and I learned much from him, and uh, a great talent. And he brought from Brazil, Ronaldo Langini from Hattis Capitino. Many of these young guys started with Palais. Uh, Ronaldo jumped in and, and Ronaldo not only brought his own talent, but he was able to learn from Greg. So the, the tradition of Midwest just was always refining and making our technique smoother, quieter, uh, complying with the rules, complying with the horse, the feeling, and, and producing an elegant look that you see in our horses. Yes. Sandro Pena, his first airplane ride was to Midwest mm -hmm. from Captain Fido. He worked with yes. uh, passionate about the horses. And I would see him every time when I would visit Palais. It invited him to the United States. It, it was a thrill uh, to watch Sandro grow up and now become one of the leaders of the breed. He does an amazing job. He's a strong horse. Uh, a great eye, and, and we did have a great team. You, you, you learned well, Sandro. And a special shout out to Gil Valdez, who in my opinion is the best conditioner of halter horses probably in the Arabian breed. Gil has an excellent eye and really talented at conditioning and bringing these horses to full scale for the horse show ring. He's also really good with the babies, and I'm very proud of him and Sandro and the Arabians International. They make a great team. Arthur Nassimens now with Haras Mayed. Arthur also was at Midwest. He's showing in Saudi. He shows in Argentina. Uh, gifted, gifted handler. Really good with the horses. 
and really blazing the trail for his business. He's doing extremely well. And Dougie Mar Gordiano, uh, very dear to my heart. He's the leading guy at Midwest today. The reins are in his hands. Uh, Dougie watched, I knew Dougie when he was 13, 14 years old, him in Hell Cities, uh, in a showmanship class in Brazil. And they, they both <laughs> came to Midwest. And, and Dougie Mar's skills are limitless. Um, he has learned, I think, better than anyone. And if, if he has 25 or 55, each horse will be handled properly in the right way. And there, there's no extent of gratitude that I can say uh, for Dougie Mar. And Hell City's Rodriguez was there for 10 or 12 or Hell I don't remember how many years. But magnificent job. And coming from Capitofino and a great horse smith. His father, Zeze Rodriguez, was, uh, I have enormous respect, a great Western rider. And he produced sons that are great horsemen, and these Brazilian guys have really done a remarkable job. And Hell City's better half is Margot Rodriguez, who is one of the best at conditioning, managing, feeding, and just loving the horses. Her organizational skills are the best of the best. And I have to say a special thank you, Margot, for the great job you did with all the national champions you took care of at Midwest. Ricardo Rivera from South America, an amazing young man, and he brought with him a great talent. Ricardo did an outstanding job, especially with all of the kids and the amateurs, a lot of patience, and a brilliant job managing the training division at Midwest. Young Austin Boggs, a fifth generation horseman, is now working with his uncle and a great teammate with Dougie Mar Gordiano in the halter division. Austin is extremely gifted and no doubt ready to lead in his own string of national champion halter horses. And some of the European guys, Tommy Oban spent some time in the West in his youth and learned in the Shukin brothers as well. We're working with all of these guys today. Uh, they did extremely well. Frank Spolney, when he was a lad, uh, he was working with, I believe, Heinz Mertz, maybe at that time. He did it remarkable, and he has done such an incredible job in Europe. Those guys today are the leaders throughout Europe. And now Fernando Poli is here, a Brazilian turned American, doing a great job at managing the farm there. These are some of the trainers that have been through the West, shared friendship, and fun stories and times, and now our leaders of the breed. David, over the years, there's been some amazing breeders uh, that have did an amazing job breeding horses, and obviously these pedigrees play an impact. You know, if it was 20 years ago, they, you still will see some of this up in the pedigrees today. Can you name some of those breeders that would come to your mind when you think of major impact players or somebody that made a made a stamp in the breed yeah. i think the easiest thing was to pick up a pedigree of a champion today most of the world champions and national champions will encompass many many breeding programs in there today and some of the top breeders you know i spoke early in this conversation about dan ganey and the look of the ganey fountainhead arabians Dr. LaCroix with Bosk and the, the profound influence that Bosk brought to the shoulders and the neck sets and the movement of horses in America. Judith Forbes and the beautiful horses from Egypt and the Egyptian horses and with Halima and Sedan and, and the foundation they made was incredible. Uh, Lenita Peroy, what she did with Ali Jamal, was uh, one of the greatest of all time. Another horse that I would have loved to have had is Ali Jamal. Uh, what a legend. What a legacy that he has left behind. And Paulo Levy, what he did with his program in Brazil, so I think through the United States, South America, encompassing all of these, uh, it, it's amazing. Uh, breeders throughout Europe, if, you, if I had to pick just one who has made the most impact on the world today, I, I would give that award to the Polish stud farms. Uh, I've had the pleasure of visiting and doing significant business now with Michal and Yanao and Bialka and, and to see those fields, oh my word, it's it's amazing. And, and they are genetically powerful breeders. And we were blessed to have, you know, there's like Profinka, Yeja Monse, and Perferka, and, and science like Pogrom, 
and we brought Vittorio to the program. To have this opportunity to work with breeders like that has, has been a profound joy. The best breeder in the world, the Polish Dead Fox. David, there's been some great amateurs that have come through the Midwest stores, and obviously today with the Futurity programs, with Scottsdale Signature, uh, Breeders Finals, Minnesota Breeders, Region 12 Spotlight. Can you share with us some of those amateurs that are a big part of the Midwest family and success? Yes. And the, the amateur is a great program for the Arabian breed. And I think it's part of the success of the Arabian business today. Uh, the owners love to show the horses. This is something that we promote big time at Midwest, is the hands-on involvement with their own horses and showing. And the creation of these signature and breeders and from Minnesota, which was the original all the way down, has really boosted the industry. If you look at these signature classes at Scottsdale, you sometimes you'll have 80 yearling fillies, all shown by the amateurs. So it has really became not only a lot of fun, but a fine art. And those amateurs have to show up just like you do for your equitation or your amateur performance. They've got time in the bullpen when they're gonna school their horse, or we'll start with a half Arabian gelding, or we'll start with a broodmare. And everybody can do it, and they really can at any level, and, and really enjoy it and really have fun. And it, it's really a joy to see that. And, and through the years, you'll see in some of these programs, you have to own the horse, which is a little bit more difficult, but it may be more fun in the end to see. And, and others, you can have the top amateurs show your horse at court. Um, you guys know Jordan Simons, uh, Scott Kakuza, Jason Tackett. A.J. Marino. And A.J.'s parents, Big A and Miss Denise, thank you for all the love and the greatness you bring to Midwest. Miss Denise is our angel. She just brings a light to wherever she goes and is a great member of Team Midwest. Austin Garrett, Paul Glanz, some of the owners, Whitney, Steve, Miles, and Danny Grossman. And also Janice White, Janice breeds great horses here in Scottsdale. She's very active in the promotion of the Arabian horse. She's been a president of their club here and she loves to show. She gets right in there with her horses in the auction classes and has done extremely well. So it's really good to see the Midwest family and the hands-on involvement of the horses. Jane Moore showed at the Breeders' Finals. She hadn't been shown more in many years. She was a little nervous to the start. Her little Vittorio daughter, she was unanimous on all five judges. And now she can't wait to the next gate anymore. Those owners have a blast showing their horses. And I remember Danny winning $54,000 the first time he showed in the signature auction class at Scottsdale. Uh, Maureen almost fell over the fence. And he was nervous as could be, ringing wet. And I said, this is a good time to raise the rates, Danny. And we just have a blast. So the amateurs hands-on will create more business for the Arabian horses. These guys that have gone on to be the top amateurs, they stand out. And, and anybody can do it. If you if you want to, and you you have a good coach, and you and you have the passion. And, and some of these owners will come three, four, five times a week, uh, twice a day. And the sessions are short. We love to do it in the West. And I am a very strong promoter of the owners, hands-on, amateurs. In closing, I would like to say thank you to the Arabian Horse Times and our sponsors and friends that made this time available to share our Midwest memories in years of special moments. It is both humbling and gratifying to be reminded of the wonders in our journey that is Midwest. Stay tuned for the next episode we will enjoy the profound influence of the legendary Bay Shaw and the horses I always admired that were not stabled at Midwest. Thanks for watching.